Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about Microsoft's generative AI solution called Copilot. We're also talking about how companies are using Copilot, and we'll take a look at the potential future for this AI assistant. To discuss that, I'm joined by NTT Data's Wendy Collins, the Chief AI Officer. Wendy, very good to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. So uh, NTT Data is a, certainly a well-known company, but for those who, who don't know as much about it, uh, what, what does NTT Data do, NTT Data do and, and, and what about NTT Data and, and Copilot? Sure. So NTT Data is an IT and business services provider, and we're in over 80 countries around the globe that gives us the ability to have global reach with local contact with our clients wherever they are. And specifically, as it relates to Copilot and other generative AI tools, you can imagine we're having lots of conversations with our clients about those tools and how they envision using them. So I'm happy to be here today. All right, great. That, that that's my, makes, makes perfect sense. All right, let, let's let's dive into to Copilot. What, what exactly does Copilot do, uh, and how are companies using Copilot? What, why why should companies care about it? Well, as I'm sure all of your listeners and viewers know, um, generative AI is one of the hottest topics in enterprise conversations today. And Copilot is a Microsoft tool that really helps enable collaboration and operational efficiency, both in for knowledge workers and for all types of business units and areas uh, for an enterprise. Mm -hmm. And, and what sort of trends do you see uh, in, in terms of adoption? Is it you know gaining popularity? What, where do you think the companies stand in terms of uh, adopting Copilot? Well, it's really interesting timing because just this week I had a large company call and ask us to help partner with them on how to take best advantage of Copilot. We certainly see enterprises leveraging Gen AI and tools like Copilot for gaining operational efficiency, but I would say the smartest companies, they're leveraging AI, generative AI, and tools like Copilot to drive competitive advantage. And where they already have that competitive advantage to widen the moat that protects that advantage. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you think uh, Copilot gives them this, this, co this competitive advantage? Well, for sure, it allows knowledge workers to free up their time, usually spent on more administrative tasks, and also help enables uh, collaboration across the enterprise, not just within their own department, but across departments. And that's where synergies really start to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I mean, certainly it's it's new technology. It's not something there's a really a, a legacy, you know, legacy path for it. I mean, are there any challenges the companies are having with Copilot? And you know, any, any, any potential headaches there? Well, I think the challenge is less with Copilot specifically and more around the pressure that companies are seeing to deploy generative AI very quickly. And it's probably causing um, pauses in creating a full-blown AI strategy because there's just too much pressure to go get something in place now. Um, and we're also hearing a lot of technology leaders that are getting inundated with AI use cases to leverage Copilot and other Gen AI tools. And that's actually a good problem, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're recommending in order to push through that challenge that clients can have success without a strategy by using what we call a payoff matrix. And a payoff matrix is a tool that allows companies to identify high value initiatives that they can use to get in the game now, but then do it in parallel with uh, building a blueprint for future investment. What do you recommend in terms of handling some of the challenges with Copilot? I mean, I need, you mentioned the blueprint idea, which makes perfect sense, but what, what, else, what else might help in terms of uh, addressing the, the Copilot challenges? Sure, I would say the challenges are probably more broad than Copilot and just adopting generative AI in general. And we pride ourselves at NTT Data in having the adaptability to meet our clients wherever they are in that journey. Um, we recommend strongly that they focus on business outcomes and then that will naturally um, lead and lend itself to the tools that will support those business outcomes. And Copilot is a great example of that. Um, and the other thing we really encourage our clients to adopt is a test and learn mindset. As they learn how to leverage tools for best advantage like Copilot, 
um, it will, it's a journey and it always is a journey. And we're there to help our clients along that journey um, and help them learn from best practices across the enterprise and the industry. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about uh, 2024 AI priorities. Obviously, there's, there's a lot going on. I would imagine that 2024 is going to be a really big year for artificial intelligence. How will, how, how will Copilot you know, play a role in, in this larger macro AI picture? Yes. Well, we're seeing three key patterns emerge this year in 23 that I expect will continue to grow and gain in momentum in 24 and beyond. Um, the first one is, and I think that Copilot plays a really big role in this, reducing the workforce anxiety um, because I, I do think there's some misperception that AI is there to replace the human worker. Mm. And Really, what we're seeing is that tools like Copilot are actually reinforcing the value of the human in the human machine interaction. Mm -hmm. The second pattern that we're starting to see emerge that I think will gain significant momentum in the in the months to come is that generative AI is, AI is not the only tool in the AI toolbox. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I anticipate will happen is we'll see more and more companies leverage tools like Copilot to supercharge their traditional AI solutions or to deploy them in tandem where Copilot either unlocks new tools that they can leverage for advantage or can expose the results and the outputs of traditional AI solutions. Hmm. And then the third pattern that we're really seeing emerge is that the window is closing for companies to get their data house in order. Hmm. Um, our NTT Data's Innovation Index just came out recently, and one of the eye-popping statistics in that report is that only 22% of organizations trust their own data. Mm. And in the context of AI, Copilot, and uh, all generative AI, that's just not a tenable place to be. I mean, think of it like you're, uh, you have a, a rocket that's sitting on the launch pad, but you haven't given it the fuel to go anywhere. That's the equivalent of trying to leverage generative AI tools like Copilot and others without having your data house in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the, the data piece is, is really critical. I think obviously artificial intelligence has gotten a lot of headlines this year, but of course, AI you know, is, is, is founded on data. Without a huge data repository that is well set up, you can't get the most from artificial intelligence. Um, let's talk about the overall AI services at NTT Data. I know you must talk with clients. What, what is your sense of how, how clients are, are viewing their AI strategy? You've talked a little about that, but you, where, where do you feel that companies are going with AI in the next year or so? I think there is tremendous excitement to leverage AI and generative AI. And I would say it's coming from the bottom up and from the top down and across all aspects of the business. Um, we're certainly talking to a lot of technology leaders um, who are putting in place the tools to take advantage of generative AI. But we're also leaning into conversations with business leaders who recognize this as a real opportunity um, to to drive innovation in a way that they've never been able to before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a big year for sure. Well, Wendy, I, I very much appreciate your insights. Uh, I learned a lot. It's, it's going to be a fascinating sector to follow in, in, in the years ahead. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and, and please come back and talk with us again sometime. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.